We are running through the South African bush. That helicopter thundering overhead. Somewhere in the bush here is where they mobilized that rhino. We're going to follow the helicopter there. There it is. And then we see her. Here at the Kruger National Park in South Africa, 80% of the rhino population has been killed by poachers in less than a decade. Just moments earlier, veterinarian Peter Bass guarded this female rhino from a helicopter. He's not poaching, he's trying to save this mega herbivore. And if you didn't dehorn this animal, what would be your fate? Well, that puts her at high risk of being poached. Because obviously the poachers, the bigger the horns, the more return they get on their, the, the risks they take trying to, to poach her. So she's a high risk animal like this with a horn. In markets in China and Vietnam, rhino horn fetches about $10,000 a pound, with some believing it's an aphrodisiac. And is she gonna suffer not having this horn? So it's a bit like getting your nails cut. They remove the horn and begin the task of tagging this animal. The team's done this hundreds of times, and now without her horn, the rhino is less vulnerable to poachers. Moments later, she's back on her feet. These are drastic measures, but with rhinos facing possible extinction within five to 10 years, conservationists say they are necessary. We were trying our best. And Tanika Gulele is the head ranger of the southern section of the park. She says dehorning has stopped poaching in her region the past month. So what happens when you hear about poaching and you hear another rhino is killed and another rhino is killed? It pains my heart. It pains my heart because it, it makes me uh, feel that there's a lot to be done in our country. People must understand that these animals, it's, they've got value into the society. Kruger's chief pilot, David Similani, has seen hundreds of rhino dehornings and deaths. We're at this stage because we are on the brink of failure. Um, and this is the last, the last thing that we can do to try and, and to, uh, save the species. Because a dead rhino like that is a crime scene. A dead rhino like that is a crime scene. It's a particular species in South Africa. Most of the time, the only witnesses to the crime are baby rhinos orphaned by those poachers. David's most delicate missions? Flying those calves to the sanctuary. With this chopper, you've actually taken orphan calves to care yeah, for a yeah. while. We have taken orphan calves to care for a while. If they're if they're big enough to fit in the back here, we up, we lift the seats up, we lie them flat there. Huh. It takes a bit, six men to be able to put it in the back. Care for Wild, founded by Petronel Nuvot, is the rhino sanctuary where those 300-pound babies are most often airlifted. It has been home to over 100 orphaned rhinos whose parents were killed by poachers. It sounds like it's only getting worse, like you're getting more and more orphaned rhinos. Yeah, if I look back uh, over the last 10 years, it was a massive shock. I would say the worst in my lifetime, from my time in the Endangered Species Protection Unit, where I was a captain in the police, mm. uh, I've never seen anything like that. Petronel and her team hand-reared these animals with trial and error. They spent most of their days preparing milk, weighing the animals, taking baby zebras like Mujaji and reluctant rhino calves like Daisy for walks. The incredible thing about these rhinos is that they really do need their mother's milk. And when they're orphans this age, even though they're fed every two hours, they still can't get the nutrition they need. And just three months ago, what Petronel calls a miracle happened here. A pair of very special rhinos. And so this is this is the miracle baby. This is the miracle baby. They're the first of a kind. Winter becoming the first ever orphaned rhino to mate with another orphan and bear a calf. Hi, Blizzy. Zoologists didn't think it was possible. But three months ago, little Blizzy was born. Is that incredible that you have a, a, a mother that was so wounded, so maimed and traumatized, and you have this this perfect baby? It's, every time I see her, it's a new start for rhinos. Um, mm. For us in the world, if you ask, why do we have to conserve rhino? Why is rhino important? Do you feel this? Farther down the track, there was something else Petronel wanted to show us. This big fella. That's a dad. So this is so interesting that out of all these rhinos, that's 
He's really the hero right now of He's the, hero. the sanctuary. And he was also one of the orphans that came in. Storm, as he's called, was one of those rhinos airlifted to care for wild. At that point, science didn't know whether a rhino could learn rhino behavior without other rhino adults. The miracle is that he had no parents to teach him how to be a bull rhino. No. no. He had nature, and, and it worked. It worked better than anyone thought. And Patronel now hoping there could be more miracle babies along the way. And these two are females that we think is also pregnant with his uh, babies. So it went from no orphans ever having babies to now possibly four in a short period of time. These births giving conservation is something they had not expected in their battle against poachers. Hope for the future of this species. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.